Ryan Precision, Birmingham, known for your turning work. Yep. Now, I w we'll have to clarify here, we've been here about two hours already. We've had to shut Matt up because you're absolutely raving about this machine. Yep. I've got three M32s. This is basically a straight replacement, yep. but it's not a straight replacement though, is it? No, no, the uh, capacity is uh, uh, twice, if not three times more than what we could get on the other machines because of the actual ability of the, uh, the live tooling and what it offers you as a, uh, a machine package. Uh, where the uh, modular uh, post on the back is uh, such a big advancement for this machine, it's uh, meant we could do a lot more parts, a lot more uh, tool hungry parts, as to say, and uh, it gives us the option to put them on this machine now, whereas before we'd have to obviously look at second dopping or second processing if there was uh, too much uh, tooling requirements on it. All right, so when I'm looking in the actual machine envelope, yeah. you've got twin spindle, turret, gang with uh, live tooling, yeah. and then B-axis, yeah, full B-axis, uh, simultaneous five-axis machining, uh, if required. Uh, we also have a uh, modular uh, rear gang uh, tool uh, station, which means we can actually uh, pick what we want to put in there, whether it be a uh, platinum of turning tools or a platinum of live tooling or even a mixture of both. Uh, obviously, what's on the market is getting more and more uh, to suit this machine. Uh, at the moment, they've obviously got a catalogue of so many. But as the machine goes on, I'm, I'm imagining going to expand that. So when I'm looking at the envelope, then that, that modular system is on the sort of top of the back, essentially, yeah, just keep back, it simple. Yeah. Yeah, 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 top of the back. Uh, whereas before on the older machines, it just had uh, free turning posts. Uh, this now has, uh, it's almost like it's exploded with tooling. It's uh, got so many options, uh, we don't know what to do with it. Uh, but yeah, um, it's down to the, obviously the, uh, the operator, the processor. Uh, I mean, if we looked at it from a, a manufacturing point of view, and actually a production point of view, you could also have uh, tool posts to suit jobs. So you could almost have preset tooling uh, and you could also keep them uh, away in your tool stores and pull them out when you needed them. Right, so essentially keeping that spindle turning even longer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sets up times down and also the, uh, the tool functionality. Uh, the, they can be monitored once the job's done uh, in the tool stores and then brought out next time the job's done. So. Now, as, as I mentioned, you had three M32s, this is a straight replacement essentially, like you said, yeah. but it's slightly different. But in terms, what else has changed, power? The power of the uh, motors has uh, gone up. Uh, we're now talking between one to 1.5 kilowatts. On the, the live tooling, tooling right? yeah. On the live tooling, yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, that gives us a lot more um, rigidity for these new super alloys that are coming out, uh, where you need that extra bit of uh, grunt behind your machine to push that material off the, off the, uh, the job. And you say that the machine itself, M32s, are known for being rigid, solid machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't get much deviation in the job. Thermal deviation, I've never really known it. Uh, it tends to hold size very well. Uh, pro, prior example is on the, on the older machines, we were holding 10 microns on 125,000 batch of components. And uh, that, was, uh, that was music to our ears we've got on, is because it means that not only is the actual uh, uh, tool management down, the actual um, component uh, cycles maintained across it. There's no tweaking for different, you know, trying to get that right, so. Now, I want to come back to the axes and the, and the spindles, gangs, turrets. Yeah. How, it's 15 axes, is that right? 15 axes, yes. Uh, if you're going to ask me to mention them all, I can't. Uh, but they are definitely there. I've checked and moved them all. Uh, and they all work fine, so. And that also includes a, a Z axis on the parts catcher, is that right? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a programmable parts catcher, which uh, allows you to do longer work, uh, whereas on, on some of the uh, other style sliding heads, they have a rear unload, which goes through the uh, rear spindle. This has the ability to uh, clamp and pull and reclamp, so you can actually drag the part out as you're going, uh, which gives you, uh, again, a better sort of like, uh, finishing capability of the job, because if it comes out of the machine and bangs onto another component, you've got a problem. So obviously, that's one of the things. And with the, uh, this unloading, we can control that and pull it out at a balance point and make sure it's uh, safe it comes out of the machine. Okay. So what I want to do is move on to the controls, because I think you're a big fan of Mitsubishi controls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it took me a while to come round, but I did come round in the end, and I'm glad I did, because um, whereas some of the uh, other uh, sliders and the other programming uh, systems out there will only read like three lines ahead or four lines ahead, um, with the Mitsubishi control, it uh, reads I think it's three pages ahead, right. so the actual processing speed is a lot better. So you're not ever got that problem where it's sort of like it's catching up or you might misread, and you find out an error during the process rather than before the process, which obviously brings in the high-speed check of the machine. When you've done the program, you can put it through the high-speed check, and it will check your program out, and it will tell you if you've uh, had a bad day. 
<laughs> Which doesn't happen often, if at oh, all. no, never here, never, no. Now also, it ties in with the, the Alcott Wizard that you do use as well. Yeah, we use the Alcott Wizard, uh, which is obviously a very powerful tool to have. Um, one, it will uh, aid programming offline, especially for the Mitsubishi. Um, programming offline is a little bit tricky if you haven't got that. Mm -hmm. It's doable, but again, you might as well have the right tools in place to do that. So we utilise that uh, function of the, uh, the system. Brilliant. So with this machine, I'm going to throw in here, you can do your balance turning, your super pose turning, yeah. your prismatic parts if, if need be. But what I want to do quickly is just have a look at some of the parts you've made. If you just, and again, I don't want to curtail you, Matt, because you've yeah. got so much to say about this, but just quick sort of look at three parts you've manufactured. Yeah, well, I've got some up here, uh, as if by magic, they just <laughs> appeared. You know. uh, but yes, yeah, so we've got the uh, all uh, 316 stainless, which obviously, uh, as engineers, we all love to make uh, stuff out of. But this is one part that obviously it's got all type of uh, processes on there. You've got milling, you've got Fred milling, you've got um, chamfer and deburring on it as well, which obviously is a great part on the machine. If we can get it off clean, we're happy. Um, then we've got another part here which is a bit longer, and this has got the balance turning on it. It's also got the balance milling on it. Again, reduces the cycle time. And, uh, and this one's bored all the way through as well? Yes, yeah, it's got a uh, deep hole drilling cycle on there. Um, and again, with 316, it isn't nice, but again, <laughs> right machine, right tooling. And you listen to the guys when they tell you to do something. Uh, it, tends to work very well for you. So yeah, that's uh, a prime example of that. Brilliant. Uh, and then obviously we've got this uh, little tool, as we call it, which has obviously got balanced milling on it, which is a nice, another prime example of the machine using its full power on the uh, uh, milling motors. Uh, again, out of 316 stainless. Uh, didn't struggle, didn't find any issues with it. So just popped them out and we were happy. Fantastic, Matt. Thanks for giving us an overview of the machine. Now, what, one final bit. One of your colleagues, Lauren, said a machine like this was on his bucket list. So just a quick summary of why you like it so much. Uh, again, down to the modularity of the, uh, the rear gang, that's a massive one for us. But having the B-axis on the front um, almost uh, makes that turret uh, surplus requirement. But that requirement does come in handy when we need it. Matt, great fan of citizens. The M32s, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Colin.